Hi, and welcome to Happy Fisherman Adventures. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. In today's episode, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite squid. We're going to ask Mick from Hooked on Bait and Tackle to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to catch squid. Squid can actually be very easy to catch. And sometimes they will go, doesn't matter what color you got, what jig you got, they just go. But there is times when they're actually difficult to catch. And we hope that Mick's tips and tricks will help you guys to catch lots of squid. Let's get on with it. Well, people's favorite. So today we're going to get Mick to talk to you about squid. It is very popular. Kids love it. Old people love it. Women love to catch them. And obviously it's a lot of them around. And some of us love to eat them as well. <laughs> the beautiful eating. And as you said, there's plenty of squid around. We're blessed down here that we have a really good squid population. And we don't need a boat, we can do it land-based, we can do it off the piers, we can even wade off the beaches and go out there and, 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 and catch squid that way as well. So we are blessed on how we can go and chase these squid. Of course, first thing first, people will ask, oh, what jig? Well, as you can see along the wall there, I've got hundreds of squid jigs in here and every one of these jigs will be someone's favorite. So I work on a couple of basic rules of um, what I tend to use. I have some lights, some darks and some naturals and I'll mix that up according to where I'm fishing. One of the key things with squid jigs that a lot of people do miss uh, out on a little bit is all these different squid jigs, there's what we call fast sink jigs, which we use in high current areas, which will sink really, really fast in that fast running water. I've got jigs I can run in really shallow water. For example, if I'm land-based, they're a slow sink. So it allows me to have control. And if we're just generally fishing, obviously you've got your standard you know, everyday sink. But all these jigs will sink and fall and again act differently through the water. So it's about it ma matching the, uh, the jig up to where we're fishing. For example, if I'm land-based and I'm in shallow water, no point putting on a heavy you know, weighted jig because it's going to go straight to the bottom. We're going to get snagged and caught. No fun in that. So let's use a, a shallow or slow sink jig to, to make that life, uh, your life a lot easier when you're working those areas. So it's a matter of picking the jig to work those depths the right way. Are they obviously going by grams or by how, how would you say? Yeah, so the, the, most people will see the jigs like a 2.5 or a 3 or 3.5. So that's the, the sizing of the jig. It doesn't necessarily then tell you whether it's a, a, a slow sinking or a fast sinking. The packaging will give it away. So that's good when it's sitting on the wall. We know what we're looking at. But when we're looking in our tackle box, we don't know what they are. Most companies will actually stamp on the lead and it will have a, like a little S or an XD or something like that and that will denote whether it's a slow sinking or a standard or, or a shallow jig. So that makes it a little bit easier to pick once you're out of your packaging and sitting nicely in your box, you know, which jig to go and grab to, to go and use. Well, most common place that we fish is obviously between Queen's Cliff <laughs> and Long Point Lonsdale yep. because there is a big squid there. Yep. Of course, problem we get there, it's the weed or, well, cow. Yep. So what would you recommend? Well, once again, it's about controlling that, that jig. So if I'm fishing out quite deep, and in some areas there we're fishing, you know, 13, 15, 18 metres of water on those grass beds, but the current's up there and really running strong. So I will put a up to a size 4 jig down there with, with a quick sink rate to get it down there. Squid are going to be on the bottom. Well, they're going to come up and feed. But if I can't get that jig down to where they are, they're not always going to come up and grab it. It's a little bit different when I'm in calm areas because there's no current. They will certainly come from a long way to come up and grab that jig. But when I'm in that fast current like at Queenscliff, I need to get that jig down to, down to them because we only have little windows that we can fish. On the different days, like overcast or mm -hmm. sunny days, would you use different colours? 
certainly use different colours, whether the water's clean or whether it's dirty. So you, you'll see a lot of people using dark in that dirty water. Your red foils work really well, your blacks, or any of those solid matte colours, your purples and things like that, that work really, really well in that slightly dirtier water, or fishing them after dark as well, because squid hunt really, really well at night as well. So it's just a matter of matching that up. Also having on clearer, calmer conditions, having those light, bright colours going, hey guys, I'm over here, come over and have a look. Because right, sometimes we might not be casting in the right spot, but having that bright colour jumping and hopping through the water column, it will drag them to come over and have a look at where you're fishing. Probably the biggest thing I can say from a fishing from a boat point of view, you've got to imagine if you're in shallow water and calm water like that, your boat is a big shadow going through the water. Now, not only you and I love eating squid, there's a lot of other critters out there that want to chase those squid down as well. So that big shadow comes across, they can get a little bit nervous and, and, and might slink down in the weed a little bit. So always cast ahead of your drift. Work ahead of your drift, always casting and working. Your jigs are going to sink lower and you're not spooking those fish straight up. But that's why you'll find sometimes when you are drifting, that jig or that line you've got sitting out the back, you know, 20 or 30 metres behind, that big shadow's disappeared and you've got that squid jig that's dragging behind you, that will off get off and get eaten as well. So, but always where you can work a heavier drift to get the best results. Awesome. So you heard it. It's not just about the size three, two point five, like we all obviously look at it, but it's actually slow sinking or yeah. fast sinking, which again means a lot. Plus, just mix and match the colors. And you heard when it's overcast, use darker. When it's actually bright. Just use your yeah, naturals, your, your white, you know, everyone talks about the Chimera white cloths and things like that. They've all got their own little purposes. So it's a matter, again, having a, a basic collection of lights, darks and some naturals, and you're, up, you're halfway there. It is Sunday, 19th of February, 2023, and I was excited to get new here, Fishy Fishy Burley I go. Love you guys, show. Thank you. Do a great job. <laughs> Thanks. So we are at very big boat ramp and we are a little bit late. So the car park was full. Since we love eating squid and did not have any left in the fridge, our first task was to go and get some squid around the mud island. Distance from Verebi South to mud island is around 40 kilometers. So with my new Suzuki, I can cruise at 50 kilometers per hour and I would get about 1.9 kilometers per liter, which is just unbelievable it takes me roughly about 45 minutes to get there but we love fishing that area so we don't mind the trip when we got there the water was crystal clear so it was easy to find grass patches as expected on a beautiful sunny weekend day there would be quite a few boats around this area Mima had one of our favorite jigs Shimano Clinch Flash Boost in yellow and green color. This jig was recommended to us by Mick long time ago and proved to be a very successful jig. No long in and Mima had a very nice squid on. As you can see, the Flash Boost jig did the damage. The patch area is quite small, so I had to do quite a few moves. I was trying quite a few different jigs, but somehow Mima was getting the squid. The squid here was decent size, but not in big numbers as we were a little bit late, so people were already working this area before. Then I changed my white jig to a bright orange, which did work great before, but 
not this time. So I changed again, this time green color, similar to what Mima was using. Well, the banana jig did not disappoint. Somehow today they did prefer the green and yellow jig, yet we are told that squid is colorblind. Well, the next question we get asked, it's obviously what rods, what reels, again, what yeah. gear would you suggest? Look, we're, squid fishing is one of those things. That the good thing about it is we can use almost anything to, to catch a squid. I remember when I was a quick kid learning to squid fish, we were stuck using hand lines. It's certainly progressed a long way from that nowadays. Generally, what we want a rod is to be able to cast that squid jig. Your average sort of squid jig, it weighs that 12 to 15 grams. So a, a, a rod that can cast that style of jig will also help. A little two and a half thousand size reel. Generally, I run a 10 pound braid with a 10 pound leader and I can up or down that according to, to what's going on. The actions of the rod will depend on how you like the fish. For me personally, I, I use a slightly stiffer style of rod so I can hop and work those jigs to grab some attention. And again, they, we've mentioned it uh, previously too that certain squid jigs, again, will like to swim a certain way. They don't all like being to be hopped and moved. So I use a lot of gang craft and things like that, and they're violent. You work them quite aggressively, get them darting through that water column. Other brands of jigs won't work that well. They'll sort of want to then roll up on their sides. So it's, again, learning how to work that jig with the rod that you're using to get that action. Sometimes we get caught short, we have a, haven't got a special size squid rod there to use. We're going to use a different style of rod. Just remember for the guys who are going to go and pick up their whiting rod to put that squid jig on, that's a soft style of rod. So when I'm trying to hop and work that jig, I'm not getting a very exaggerated action out of it. So if I need to do it that way, exaggerate that action on your softer style of rod so I can draw that uh, motion through the water. Because the rod's going to want to fold before I move that jig. So a stiffer squid style of rod will generally want to draw that jig and cover that ground and hop and move a lot easier. A bit more aggressive. Obviously. Yeah, correct. It, it gets that jig to dart and move the, through the water column and cover that ground. Well, you heard you can mix and match, of course, of course, the technique and find the one that works for you. But as Mick said, a bit stiffer rod, it's obviously a better if you want to control the jig. Yep. And um, that doesn't mean that whiting rod is not going to work. No, no, everything will work. As I said, when we were kids, we were using hand lines way back when, and we certainly still caught plenty of squid that way. The using uh, the better quality rods and things like that just makes the job easier. And we've found when the squid are being a little bit finicky or when they've had a lot of traffic over them, those little techniques on making the jig swim a particular way and the movement through the water, they're the, little, they're the days that that technique will shine and having the rods and reels to do that will make life a lot easier. It's not to say that you're not going to catch plenty doing it the other way. This will just do it a little bit easier for you. Mix and match, again. <laughs> Well, we got a decent sized squid, so we anchored close to the sand patch to see if there is any whiting around. I did not have a chance to use here fishy fishy burly, as the current was quite strong here, but I'm sure I will do it very soon. As usual, red is running rig, loaded with pilchard and squid cocktail, and we're ready. And then Mima hooked a nice fish. That was a good sign. We landed this nice King George Whiting, but that was the only fish we got. So after that, it was time for us to head back as Willy Vera predicted 15 knots wind in the afternoon. On the way back, we checked a few places. First, we stopped a Chinaman's hat and observed the seals. Then we stopped by Popsai and checked the activity around here. Here 
quite few people in the water snorkeling and exploring this beautiful place. Our next stop was St. Leonard's. Here, lots of boats parked in one area, so we took a closer look if there is any action happening, but we couldn't see anything. Beside the boats, there were few jet skis flying around, so we made the decision to go out. On the way out, we put the squid and King George Whiting in Hookham Skylar bag, so they are ready to prepare for dinner when we get home. Cheers! Okay, one mine advice that you can put, squid fishing? Oh, look, squid fishing, as I said, we're lucky here because it is fairly easy. But just remember, depending on where you're fishing, in certain areas, tide is really, really important. Other areas, we want an outgoing tide. Some areas, we want an incoming tide. Have a look at the terrain you're fishing and where you're going to fish for those squid. For example, on the beach in certain areas, I want that outgoing tide so I can get access to those beds because the grass beds are out too far on a high tide, but on a low tide, I can go and hit those. Conversely, if I'm in a boat, in some areas, I need that high tide to be able to walk into those areas. So it doesn't have to be a high tide. It doesn't have to be a low tide. It's all more relevant to where you're fishing. That's probably, and having a look at your terrain, having a little bit of grass, having a little bit of broken ground there. Uh, yes, squid will feed on plain sand when they're out there too, but where I can have structure, because you've got to remember, everything wants to eat a squid. So they want to be able to dart and hide at times as well. One of the easiest areas that we find, if we're out there whiting fishing, if you're on those whiting areas, squid love eating whiting. And sometimes you might get onto your favourite whiting area and you go, geez, there's no whiting here. Before you drive off looking for that next patch of whiting, drop a squid jig over. Have a quick look because you'll be surprised there'll be often a, quite a few squid in that area. So you'll get a couple of squid, good, move on. Now where you find squid, you're going to find whiting as well. So if the whiting aren't biting, put a squid jig in the water and see how you go. There you go. Well, today we got a special treat for you guys, and that's French chef Gerard Garbet. He will give you some beautiful recipe of how to prepare pipis, or as he calls them, clamps. It's just awesome. Good afternoon, Mima and TB. Thank you for having me in your beautiful kitchen. And also, congratulations for bringing this beautiful clam. Well, thank you so much for coming. Mima, it's an absolute pleasure for me to be there. We're going to start with the rice. Rice, butter, shallots, salt and pepper. First thing to do, Mima, we're going to dice the shallots. Anything special about it? Oh, uh, yes. Can you see? That's a base. And this base actually hold the whole shallots all the way. If you start to cut this way, you'll be losing everything on the board. Okay, you hold the shallot like that and you make little. And then you make them horizontal. And as you can see, it's all in once. If you start by here, you'll be losing everything. Now, see, you cut and you got very fine shallot, Mima. Like a machine. When you push the shallot, don't use the blade. Use the back. By the way, your knife, they won't be sharp for a long time. Now, we're going to start to make the rice. Keep up the pot. And we're going to make the butter. Okay. And at the same time, we're going to add the shallots. And during this time, I'm going to ask Matt to help me <laughs> to boil the water. This water represents one on half the volume of my rice. I'm going to melt the shallots, but we don't want to cook them and burn them, okay? 
Now, what we do, we add the rice in one go with two beliefs and we want to be sure that you mix every piece of rice, every grain of rice, mix in a batter. Now you got your water boiling, you can add your boiling water in one go in my rice. Beautiful. And now, that's getting hot. You can put salt and pepper. And pepper. Now, we boil again. And when it starts to boil, I'm going to transfer the rice in this dish. Okay. Have to cover and put that in the oven without touching it for 20 minutes. We're going to chop the parsley. I use the continental parsley, which gives much more flavor. Now, we're going to crush the garlic. Done. The rice is ready. Look at this, Mima. Oh, oh, nice. See? Beautiful. Let's cook the clam now. Okay, Mima, let's do it. Butter. Butter. Mima, she's good. She knows exactly what go in a, huh? In a dish. Now, what's next? Charlotte. Charlotte. She did well. She has learned on the previous lesson. It's good. Then after. Garlic. Oh. What an approach this looks! Fantastic. After? The wine. Up, 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 up. No, 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 here. Excuse me. No, 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 no. Now, when it's boiling, we can put our beautiful clam, baby. Oh, nice, fresh. Just give a little bit of. Turn like that. Now, now we put the capers. Capers to give it a bit of flavor. And the parsley. Continental. Put some pepper. Pepper, okay. <laughs> so we put the lid. Okay, just half a lemon juice. And you have to cook the clay for five, six minutes. And then they all open. Okay. Alors, now we finish off. Nice parsley on top. Presentation. And we put the butter. Oh, butter. That'll be very nice, okay? Now, we can now dish up. That's the idea. We're going to dish up. Oh, look at this beautiful. Okay, that will be the first plate. Okay, bruschetta. Yummy. And here, we're going to put the rice. Oop. Beautiful. The owner and the privilege to start your dinner. Before we go, again, thank you all for your support. Thanks to all of you that actually bought our T-shirt. You can still get our T-shirts through our website, happyfishroom.com.au, Mick Hooked on Bite and Tackle, Geelong Marine World. And yeah, thank you, I really, really appreciate it. And thank you all for subscribing to our YouTube channel, and we will see you next week. I hope, I dream, I wish, 
to catch a big fish And I do it when I can I'm a happy fisherman And I do it when I can I'm a happy fisherman